Hello everyone and welcome to the next in our series of Unlocking the Scripting Dictionary. Today we're going to be working with ranges. We've got this small range here. What we're going to do is we're going to put the whole lot into the dictionary and then we're going to output it from one range into another range in its new form. All right. Oh, and once we've done that on 10 rows of data, we're going to go into this large data set, which has got over 30,000 rows. Now, the interesting thing between pushing 10 rows into a dictionary and pushing 30,000 rows is there's virtually no way to tell the time difference between doing that. It just happens so fast. All right, let's get into it. So let's go into the back end. We press Alt F11. And we're going to create a subroutine. So we'll say sub in this Visual Basic editor, sub, and then I'm going to call it script A. Yeah? All right. Now, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to declare a couple of variables. So I'm going to dim I as a long integer, and I'm going to dim AR as a variant. Now, the AR is the array that I'm going to store the data in that range. And that's going to be equal to, AR is going to be equal to uh, square bracket A1 and then the current region. Now, if you're new to VBA, the current region is effectively just, if you hold Control Shift 8, that's the current region. And if this range just happened to grow, Control Shift 8, the current region just picks up the uh, tabular range, so everything inside this range. Yeah, so I'll just keep it to what it was originally. So we've got a nice, neat 10 row data set. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to reference the scripting dictionary. Now, there's a couple of ways you can do this you can just reference it directly the way that I'm going to do, or you can go into tools, references I've shown you in previous videos, and you can reference the Microsoft scripting runtime. It's always difficult to find. So it's Microsoft scripting runtime. So there it is just there. Yeah, but I'm not going to use that. Yeah, you can reference the dictionary directly. So we're going to say with create object. Now we open a bracket and then we re reference our scripting dictionary. Scripting.dictionary. Now, it'd be just like me to spell dictionary wrong, but looks all right. Okay. And then we end our with. All right, good stuff. Okay, so that's our reference to the scripting dictionary, right? Now, what we want to do is we want to loop through this array with our i, yeah? So we'll say, so we'll create a for loop. For i equals the first item in the array to the last item into the array. So that's the U bound AR, yeah? That will give me the upper bound of the array. That gives me the upper, the length, okay? So how long the, the array is. That's the same as doing that AR comma one. Now, if I want the width, it's AR comma two, yeah? But I'm only interested in the length and that suffices, yeah? So I'll say next I, okay. now. In this line here, this is where the rubber hits the road, yeah? Now, you'll know from the previous videos that with the dictionary, we've got a key and an item, yeah? And we're going to push the information in through the item. So, the reference is already made. So, we say dot item. Now, it's item because we're pushing it in one by one. And then we open a bracket. Now we reference our array. So our array is AR, open bracket, which item in the array? Well, the first one, which is represented by I. Comma, one, because it's the first column that we want. Yeah? We close our bracket for the array. We close our bracket for the item. Okay? Now, that we want that to equal itself. So we just type it again. Item, open bracket, AR, I, comma, one, double close bracket. Right. Now, would you believe? That's it. Yeah? That's how we've pushed unique items from column one into our dictionary. Yeah, Marcus, but how do we get it out? 
Well, glad you asked. Okay, so we can get it out to a range, but I thought I might show you uh, using the debug print line. So we might just create another variable. So we'll dim k, short for key, as a variant. And then I'll reference that inside here. So we'll say uh, for each k in dot keys, yeah? Because I want all of the keys. So notice the S at the end, keys, yeah? And then we'll say next uh, k, yeah? Okay. So it's just a single liner in here. We'll say debug dot print. And then we'll print K. Okay. All right, so that will give us a look at what's actually going on under the hood, yeah? So let's go through this. So we'll go, uh, firstly, I'll view my immediate window because this will get the items that have been printed out. And then let's go through, oh, I don't like the look of that. That looks a bit better. That looks a lot better. Okay, good. Let's go through by hitting F8 and start the procedure. Now, it should tell me if there's any errors. Uh, no, so that's good. So we'll run through. This gets pushed into our array. Now we've started the reference to the scripting dictionary. So we go in and then category gets pushed in first, cell phones, cameras, etc., etc. So I'll, I'll push through and then we'll see what it actually looks like. So I'll press F5 to finish that. Okay, so we get to this line. Now, what it's gonna do, it's gonna take each of the keys and it should be printing it out. So we'll press F8, category comes first. Cell phone should come next. What's next? Cameras. Next, computers. Finally, TV, video and music, and that's it. Okay, so we've finished our procedure. We're sure that that um, is producing the right information. If we Alt F11 back, we just want the unique items. So starting with the header, these are the unique items. And that one, that's it there. That's it. They're the unique items. It's unfortunate that, that was in a different color, but they're the unique items. We want all the other lines to be ignored. Oh, I've got cell phones in there twice. So that will get ignored. So cell phones, cameras, computers, TV, video, and music, yeah? All right, so how do we output that into a range, yeah? Because that's what you're going to be interested in. So Alt F11, we'll go back into here. And I don't need this now, so I'll just take it away. I'll take that away as well. And then what we want to do is we want to say that I'm going to use and abuse the array again. So the AR, AR is going to be equal to an array and that array is made up of the dot keys notice it's the s so it's not a key that i want to push in it's all of them and the dot items yeah now that pushes uh, the information into the ar yeah now uh, what we want to do is now we want to output that data so let me just minimize this That was too much of a minimization. So I want to, yes, I want to minimize it like that. So let's push the dot, the information into column G, yeah? So the way that we do that, and you get quite proficient at this if you do it a lot, okay? So what I want to do is I want to say, I want to, I want the information to start in G1. So, oh, control Z. Uh, we'll start in G1, yeah? And then I want to say dot resize, yeah? I want to resize it. And I want to resize it, open bracket, now it's rows.columns. Now the rows, the length of the rows I'd like is the length of the dictionary. So it's dot count, yeah? Now I type a comma and then how many columns wide is it? Well, it's just a one dimensional array, yeah? So we close our bracket and then we say that that is equal to application dot transpose and then I'll just make this a little larger because we're running out of space and then we'll go uh, that's our array yeah 
Alright, so now we click on the next line. Notice it capitalizes these two. We should be all good. Now we know that the information's gold up until this point, yeah? So it's basically, I might just put a breakpoint in there and we'll run the procedure with an F5 key. And then if I can push this across, we should be able to see it. Yep, I've got everything in the screen. So I might move that across like that. And we should be able to see the information coming nicely into column G. All right, so we'll press F5 and that goes all the way down to here. And then F8, the data's inside of our array. And now what we wanna do is we wanna push the data into these cells. So we press F8 and there they go. Magically, all at once into the range that is uh, has been used and abused by our array. Now, if we actually have a look at the locals window, view locals window, you'll see our array has got, in the first instance, all of these items, and then in the second instance, empty, yeah? All right, so it's just pulled the information in that we've told it to pull in, yeah? So, um, how would we... I'll just finish this procedure. How would we sort of uh, change it? So uh, the information, say I wanted the payment information to come in. Now, naturally, the data's in the first row. So if I want the payment, unique payment information to come in, I would just change the reference point because I've used the whole current region. So uh, I'll go Alt F11. And then all I've got to do here is change the point inside of my array, yeah? So I'll change the column to the second column and the second column, and then I might just put this in in the next column. I'll put it into H, yeah? I'll put it into H. So we'll say H1 is equal to this. Now we might just push this data down to this point here. So I can either use F5 or I can just hit this run button. I might hit this because you can see it. So I'll hit the run button, click, and it goes all the way down to here. And then I'll just use F8. And there goes our payment information into those cells. All right. Now, let's go and do exactly the same thing in the larger data set, yeah? And I might change the reference point back to our first column, yeah? One and one. And I might add some random data right down here. We might add a drone because it's the same sort of information. We might add a laptop. Yeah? All right. So just one instance of each inside of our large range. Yeah? All right. Now I might go back to the top. We'll go Control Home. Control Home. And now we're at the top. And Alt F11. All right. So I might just put the breakpoint down there so we want it in column H all right so we'll run the procedure on the 30,000 rows so we click the button and then we're onto the basically the line that outputs it so we press F8 comes out instantly yeah and if we were to run that in real time so if I take this away delete run the 30,000 rows in real time stop the procedure ready one two three click Oh, I left the breakpoint on. <laughs> Muppet. All right, I'll stop the procedure. No breakpoint this time. All right, let's go. Ready? One, two, three. Bang. Just processes the information so quickly. Yeah? Now, that is a sort of a fairly high level uh, overview in how to work with ranges with the scripting dictionary. It's very, very useful particularly when you're dealing with the fact that it only takes unique items, yeah? You can do so, so much more once you've trapped that unique item. You can start manipulating the data. You can push the sales amount into the key. And actually, in the next video, I summarise this, and it happens in real quick time. I think it co I call it fast calculating. Yeah. Now you could do it all in a pivot table. That's not the point. The point is to explain how the scripting dictionary works. Yeah. All right, everyone. I've enjoyed giving the lesson. I hope you've enjoyed it as well. Have a wonderful day.